Fast Demonstration Video Data Management. The data set I'm using for this demonstration is an Excel file called March, which is a file about airline flights that took place in the month of March 1990. So the variables are flight number, date, time, the origin, the destination, miles, what type of cargo was on the plane, how many people boarded the plane, how many people transferred, and several other variables that I'm not going to talk about as much in the SAS demonstration. I'm using this data set to show what I call some basic management tasks that can be done in the data step and in procedures. So since this is an Excel data set that we're working with, we are going to either use PROC import or the import wizard to bring this data set into SAS. And what I did was I had used the import wizard which had generated this PROC import code for me. And so the data set is now called work.marchflight. So this is the SAS temporary data set that was created from the Excel spreadsheet March. And usually the first thing I do when I've imported an Excel spreadsheet and I've created a SAS data set is I want to find out what's in the data set. So I start by doing a PROC contents. So we have 635 observations in this data set and we have 13 variables. And here is an alphabetical listing of the variables and it gives us the type of variables, what their label was, the length of the variables, and if there had been a format or an informat attached to the variables. Now the first thing I want to show you is how we create a copy of a data set. And we've done this before, but I'm kind of doing this to reinforce some of the concepts that I've talked about earlier in the class. So to create a copy of a SAS data set into another SAS data set, we just use the set statement. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a new temporary data set called March, and we've copied in exactly what was in the SAS data set March flight. So we don't need an in file or an input statement when we've used the import wizard to bring in that Excel spreadsheet. And then I'm creating a couple of new variables in this new data set March. So I'm creating a variable called tote passengers. I'm creating a variable empty seats. I'm creating a variable of the total non-passengers, tote non-pass. And then I'm creating a variable percent full. So I want to point out that these four new variables that I've created in this data step are on the SAS temporary data set March. These variables are not on the data set March flight. They're not on the SAS temporary data set March flight. Now that I've created this data set March, I want to take a subset from that data set. And so to subset a data set, to create a portion of the data set from the larger data set, we're going to use an if statement in the data step. So here we're interested in only selecting flights that occurred on March 15, 1990. So you see here we're going to make use of the concept of how we use date as a constant. So we put in our date in the format that we need to use when we're using date in a statement. So we're just selecting out those observations where the date of departure was March 15, 1990. And then I'm going to just print out only those March 15 flights. So I'm going to run all the code through the subsetting of the data. And notice here we have 21 observations of flights that occurred on March 15th. And so this second temporary data set we called data March 15th to indicate that that was what was in this data set. Now I'm going to create another temporary SAS data set called London. And in this situation, again, I'm bringing in my data set March, and I'm selecting out only flights where the destination was London. So again, destination is a character variable. So if we want to use a character variable in an if statement, we have to surround it by quotes. 
So here again we have if dest equals lun. So what SAS is going to do is only keep those observations where the destination is London. So if we run this code, we see here that these are all the flights where their destination was London. And we're printing out all the variables, so all of the rest of the variables in the data set are included in this printout. Before moving on to our next example, I also want to mention that we could actually have written this statement differently and also ended up with only flights where their destination was London. So another way that we could have written this statement, and I'll just do it as a comment, if destination not equal to London, then delete. So this second statement that I've written is just an alternative way of writing if destination equals London. We could have written if destination not equal London, then delete. And we would have ended up with the same observations in our data set London. In this next example, I'm creating a SAS data set that's temporary called long flight. And in this data step, the way I'm creating the data set long flight is by saying if miles greater than or equal to a thousand, then output. And I'm adding this output to show you that this is actually what's implied when we write the statement if miles greater than or equal to a thousand. So SAS interprets the statement if miles greater than or equal to a thousand to be the same as if miles greater than or equal to a thousand then output. Similarly, the statement if dest equals lun in the data step London is the same as if we had written if dest equals lun then output. So we could have written then output. That's implied with these if statements. So if dest equals lun then output is the same as if dest equals lun. Anyway, so here we're creating a data set long flight, which are all flights that were greater than or equal to a thousand miles. So again, if we ran this code, we would see that these are just flights that were greater than or equal to a thousand miles. So if we look at the miles column, we see all of these flights went more than a thousand miles. Let's say we wanted to delete cases. And I showed you how we would do that in the data step London. Here we're creating a data set called short flight. And we're saying if miles are greater than or equal to 1,000, then delete. So here we're taking our data set March. And we're deleting all observations where the miles of the flight were greater than or equal to 1,000. And I'm not going to do a proc print here. Another helpful management task that we can do is by using the keep or drop statements. So the keep statement tells us to keep just certain variables in the data set. And so in this statement, we're creating a data set called March Passengers. And we're only interested in keeping these selected variables, date, time, orig, dest, and so forth, all the way to capacity. So we're telling SAS that for each observation, we're only going to keep those variables. Another way that you can write this exact same keep statement is right in the data statement line. So here we're saying data march underscore passengers. And in parentheses, we have keep equals, and we list all of the variables that we want kept in that data set. So there are two ways of writing a keep statement. You can have a keep statement by itself, or you can have a keep statement that's written within the data statement. Similarly with the drop statement. So here we have a separate drop statement where we're telling SAS we want to drop the variables mail and freight from our new SAS temporary data set March passengers. So we have a separate drop statement. Or we could, in the data statement, within parentheses have a drop equals and then list the variables that we want to drop from the data set. In this next example, I'm showing how we can actually rename our variables. So here, right within the data statement, 
I have this rename equals, and I'm listing the old name, which was Orage, equal to the new name, which is going to be Origin. So I'm renaming the variable Orage to Origin. I'm renaming the variable Dest to Destination. So when you're doing renaming, it's always the old name equals the new name. Or you can have a rename statement. And so again, in the rename statement, we say rename old name, which was Orage, equals Origin. And then Dest equals Destination. So you're basically listing all of the variables that you want to rename. I want to point out that even though you're renaming these variables, if there was some kind of label attached to the old name that came in when you brought in the Excel spreadsheet, that label would still be there with the new name of the variable. So let's take a look at this code where we're creating a data set March Passengers and we're renaming Orage and Dest and see what that looks like. So we're bringing in the SAS data set March, a temporary data set, and we're creating a new SAS temporary data set called March underscore Passengers. And again, what I mean when I say a temporary SAS data set is this SAS data set is only present while we have this SAS session open. We don't have this SAS data set once we have exited out of SAS. So let's run this code here. So notice here we have our new name origin and our new name destination. But the label is orig and the label is dest. The reason these are the labels is because these were the column headings when we looked at the Excel spreadsheet. So the column headings come in as the labels for this data set. So whenever you bring an Excel spreadsheet into SAS using the import wizard, the column headings both become the variable names and the labels. We can change the variable names with the rename statement, but the labels will remain the same unless we write a new label statement for them. Let's say we want to select cases for our analyses, but we don't actually want to eliminate those cases from our data set. We can do that with the WHERE statement. A WHERE statement can be used in any of the procedures. However, you cannot use an IF statement within a procedure. You can only use IF statements in the data step. So in this first example, we're interested in printing out only flights where the destination was LAX. And so we're using the data set March and we're selecting out only flights where the destination was LAX. Here are all the flights that went to LAX and the total number of passengers. Supposing we were interested in printing out flights where the destination was missing. So to indicate that we want to print out flights where the destination was missing, since destination is a character variable, we just use empty quotes. And that will print out all flights with a missing destination. So if we run this, turns out that there was one flight where there was no destination in our data set. We can also select cases based on values of a numeric variable. So here we're using the WHERE statement to select cases that were less than 30 percent full. And the great thing about the WHERE statement when we use it in procedures is it's not affecting the data set. We're not eliminating cases from the data set as we were when we were using if statements in our data step. What we're doing is just selecting that out for the purpose of that particular procedure, or the, in this case, the procedure of looking at flights that are less than 30% full. So here we're printing out those flights. And here we see our percentages. Notice that flights that we're missing are included as flights that are less than 30% full. So we have that same issue that if you were saying something less than a number, a missing value, a missing numeric value is counted as less than any number. And we came across that when we were talking about how to write if statements when we were creating new variables. 
In this example, we are going to use the WHERE statement with the BETWEEN. And the way that works is that you can now select a range of values to be printed out with the WHERE statement. So we're writing a statement where percent full is between 25 and 35. When you use a WHERE BETWEEN, it's going to also include the limits 25 and 35. So if we run this code, we see that we have flights that are between 25 and 35 percent full. So this range includes 25 and 35. Let's say we are interested in cases that are missing on a numeric variable. We would use a WHERE statement and here we're looking at where the number of passengers is missing so we have a WHERE statement tote passengers equals missing. So we looked at where we had missing destination. Now we are going to look at where we have missing on passengers, which is a number. Destination was a character string, so we used empty quotes. When we want to talk about missing numbers, we would use the period. So here are the cases where number of passengers is missing. And we can combine in our WHERE statement where we're interested in looking at in this example the percent full was less than 60 and destination equals London. So we're now selecting on two different conditions. So an observation to be included in this printout has to both have the percent full being less than 60 and the destination of the flight equal to London. And So here we see that destination is London, percent full is less than 60. And if, for example, there was an observation where percent full was missing and the destination was London, that observation also would have been included in this printout. We can also select cases based on a value of a date variable. So we can use a date constant in our WHERE statement, similar to the way we used a date constant in our IF statement. So this is going to select out flights that occurred on March 7, 1990. So we're only going to see a printout of those flights, but again, we're just showing that the printout is of flights that occurred on March 7th. So these are all flights that occurred then. And again, we can use the WHERE and BETWEEN statement to select out flights that were between March 7th and March 9th, including those two dates. So we can use the date constant in a WHERE BETWEEN statement. And then in this last example, we're selecting out cases with a missing date. So when we have a missing date, remember date is a number, so we just say where date equals period, because date is a number. So here are a number of examples that I've used with date in the WHERE statement. And again, we can use date as a number, or we can write it as a constant, and still select out cases using that criteria. So let's just print out these last proc prints so you can see that. So the, here there was one observation which was missing a date, and these are the observations of flights that occurred between March 7th to March 9th. So this demonstration shows some of the ways that you can select out observations either in your procedures or in your data step itself as well as how you can rename variables, keep certain variables in your data set, drop certain variables in your data set, select out certain variables in your data set. This concludes the SAS demonstration, Data Management.